Journey Beyond Sodor. Uh-oh. One day on the island of Sodor, Henry was, was rolling into Vickerstown on his way to the mainland when his signal failed. Henry tried to break. Screech! But he crashed. Aw. Look at his wheels as they're all broken. Henry went for repairs. James was asked to take Henry's trucks to the mainland. That's a great job, James puffed proudly. What an adventure. Thomas wasn't happy. James thought he was Sir Topham Hatt's favorite engine. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. The next day, Thomas went to Vickerstown Goods Yard early and collected James's trucks. As he left for the mainland, he was excited and nervous. He didn't know how to get to the Bridling Good Yards, Bridling Goods Yard to deliver his cargo. On the mainland, Thomas met a crane named Beresford. Who are you? Beresford asked. I'm Thomas, the blue engine peeped. Thomas asked how to reach the goods yard, but Beresford didn't know. He couldn't go far, only up and down a small section of track. He was a very curious crane indeed. Thomas quickly steamed away. Later, Thomas came to a quiet engine yard filled with old machine parts. Heidi, hi, tooted an engine named Lexi. A shy engine named Theo rolled up. Thomas had never seen such odd engines. He asked what kind they were. We're experimental, Theo peeped. We're different, tooted Lexi. Test models. Lexi and Theo had a friend named Merlin, but Thomas didn't see him anywhere. You won't see him, Lexi peeped. He's a stealth engine, designed to be hard to see, invisible. Merlin can make himself invisible, Thomas gasped. Lex Lexi laughed. Let's just say he's always disappearing. With fresh coal in his hopper and a full water tank, Thomas set off again. Soon he rounded a bend and saw an amazing sight. A giant steelworks. Thomas entered the steelworks as two huge engines rolled up. The big tank engine was named Hurricane. The diesel shunter was Frankie. They knew the way to Bridlington. But don't worry about going there tonight, said Frankie. Uncouple those trucks. Thomas released his trucks and toured the steelworks. Everything glowed and hissed as molten steel was poured into molds. What a busy place. It's the hottest place in town, the big engines tooted. Later, Thomas settled down for a much needed rest. Early the next day, Frankie and Hurricane woke Thomas. They had already taken his trucks to Bridlington. Then I'll get back to Sodor. Thomas peeped sleepily. We helped you, little tank engine, Frankie said. Won't you help us in return? Thomas spent the day shunting ladle trucks and doing other hot and dangerous work. He couldn't wait to return to Sodor. But when he was done, Frankie and Hurricane wouldn't let him go. They said there was more to do and they locked him in the steelworks. What will happen to Thomas now? He won't go anywhere. He won't, we had to turn the book over and upside down to read the rest of the story. That's neat, isn't it? Looky there. Meanwhile, back on Sodor, everyone wondered, where was Thomas? James was especially worried, and he was tired of doing his friends' work. I'm going to the mainland to bring Thomas home, he said. That night on the mainland, thunder rumbled and lightning sizzled.
across the sky. Thomas knew he had to get away while Frankie and Hurricane were asleep. He rolled through the dark steelworks, going faster and faster, and bashed through the gates. Thomas escaped into the dark woods. Are you hiding? A voice asked. I'm a stealth engine. I love hiding. Thomas couldn't see anyone, but he knew it was Merlin speaking. Don't worry, Merlin whispered. You're with the best hider ever. Thomas felt safe, and the big engines didn't find him. The next morning, Merlin was gone. As Thomas headed towards Sodor, he saw Beresford the crane again, just as Frankie and Hurricane approached. Beresford quickly lifted Thomas and hid him. Just then, James rolled down the track and met the big engines. They all steamed away together. Thomas knew he had to save his friend. He also knew who could help him. Thomas hurried to find the experimental engines and asked Theo, Lexi, and Merlin to help save James. But we can't do anything, Theo protested. We can try, Merlin replied. Oh, how exciting, Lexi tooted happily. Theo and Lexi took a flatbed filled with scrap and created a fake accident. While Frankie and Hurricane went to investigate, Thomas and Merlin snuck into the steelworks. James, Thomas peeped, we have to go now. Oh, I'm more than ready, James puffed. This work doesn't suit me at all. Just then, Frankie and Hurricane returned. They chased James and Thomas back into the steelworks. When Theo tried to help, he crashed into a control panel. A giant magnet suddenly swung out and attached itself to Thomas. It lifted him up and carried him toward a blast furnace. Theo hit another button to release Thomas. He crashed down and knocked over a vat of molten steel. A fiery puddle spread toward Thomas. Hurricane raced forward and shoved Thomas out of danger. Thomas was safe, but Hurricane's wheels had touched the boiling hot puddle. Help! Hurricane cried. My front wheels are melting! Merlin quickly pulled Hurricane backward, but Hurricane's wheels were damaged. He needed major repairs. Without Hurricane, Frankie didn't know what to do. I can't manage any of everything on my own, she said. Nobody wants to work here. But Thomas knew some engines that might. The experimental engine said they'd be happy to work at the steelworks. They liked to be helpful and useful. Back on Sodor, Thomas apologized for taking James's trucks. I'm sorry I said I was Sir Topham Hatt's favorite, James peeped. If anyone is, Thomas, it's you. Don't be silly, James, Thomas said, smiling. When they got to Tidmouth Sheds, their friends were happy to see them again. Now there's a sight for sore eyes, Sir Topham had exclaimed. All my favorite engines back together again. <laughs>